Hi and welcome to the third video in the ISO 19650 video series. This third and final video will look at BIM 360 workflows in compliance with ISO 19650. As a brief agenda, we're going to do a bit of an introduction to ISO 19650. Then we'll look at an overview of meeting ISO 19650 for BIM Level 2 compliance. And then we'll look at BIM 360 workflows that comply with the ISO 19650. And just to recap on some of the previous items that we've gone over in relation to ISO 19650 in the context of BIM 360, but first we just want to outline the scope of the document as specified in the Part 2 document. So ISO Part 2 document identifies the needs for managing information using a structured approach to managing processes and managing that information, including managing processes, design and construction stage of buildings, the sharing of information and using building information modeling and this can be applied to all project types and sizes and all organizations or company types. So just again to recap on the eight key project stages for a BIM level two project you have the assessment and need, tender invitations, responding to the tender, appointment stage, mobilization and stage six producing collaborative information and stage seven information delivery model and finally you'll have project closeout or project handover so stage six and seven primarily focus on the software and development of the models or revit models or bim models and drawings at that particular stage and those two stages and some of the key terminology definitions that we'll refer to in this particular video task information delivery plans each task team submits their plan schedule of files and this is in the form of either a pdf or some sort of spreadsheet. Similar to this, a master information delivery plan, which is the compiled list of the task information delivery plans, all put into one master information delivery plan. And this can be in the form of this particular example as seen from the Scottish Futures Trust. So the assessment and need stage identifies the project's common data environment, for example, and looking in the context of BIM 360, this is where we need to see that BIM 360 is going to meet the requirements at the assessment and need stage. So as specified in the past, the, the ISO 19650 document, files and documents should have a unique ID and this will be pre-agreed in a naming format. Should be made up of attributes separated by a dash or agreed symbol. Each field to be given a value from pre-agreed and documented standard. Each file or document to have the following values assigned, including status or suitability code, revisioning systems, and classification in accordance with particular framework. And then the ability for files or documents to be able to move between states is also a requirement of a common data environment and record the name of the user and date when file revisions were issued or from a status change of a document. And this needs to be controllable access at a file or a folder level, which BIM 360 gives us controllable permission access at a folder level. At the tender and invitation stage, we need to establish the client's exchange of information requirements that needs to be provided during that appointment. And at this stage, we also determine the level of information needed to meet each information requirement, criteria to accept a piece of information, and determine the associated information that the prospective designer may need. And then establish the dates or the milestones to coincide with the project's information delivery milestones. At the responding to tender stage, we evaluate each task team capability and resource capacity and their capability and capacity to manage their particular responsibility of information, their capability and capacity to produce that information, and then their availability of IT and infrastructure within that particular task team. Do they have the particular skills? Do they need BIM 360 skills? Or do they need BIM 360 training? And then appointing contracts to designers and contractors. At stage four, establishing delivery team detailed responsibility matrix, what information will be produced, when the information is to be shared and who with, and which task team is assigned for its production. And then skipping over mobilization stage and moving on to stage six, this is the information management process or collaborative production of information. So each task team shall generate information in accordance with their task information delivery plan. And each task team should undertake quality assurance checks. 
So once these checks are complete, the task should, if the ta task is successful, mark the file as checked and record the outcome of that check. And if the check is unsuccessful, reject the file. And then inform the information producer or author of the outcome and corrective action needed for that particular file. And then reviewing information and approving it for sharing, each task team shall undertake a review of the information within the file or folder before it's shared within the project's common data environment. And then at the information management process for information model delivery, each team should submit information model for the lead appointed party pr approval. Prior to the issuing of the information model to the client, each task team will issue the information to the lead appointed party for approval within the project's common data environment. And then at stage eight, project closeout, archive the project information model and compile lessons learned for future projects. To take these particular sections and apply them to a BIM 360 context, we're gonna look at some ISO workflows. So BIM 360 allows you to create a custom folder structure in response to the requirement of different states of a file or a folder within the ISO requirements. So within this, we have a shared folder and a published folder. And on the right hand side here, we can see an example of an ISO compliant folder structure. We have a work in progress folder, we have a shared folder and a published folder, and each folder has a folder per discipline. This allows us to control that access per team. So this can apply within the work in progress, within the shared or within the published. And while this is not a hard and fast rule for every ISO compliant project, this is just one example or method to comply with ISO 9600. The work in progress area, by creating folders by discipline, allows the control of information by access permissions within BIM360. And then the permissions control can be assigned per role or per company or per individual, and we can set their different permission levels at the various folder levels. Custom attributes allows you to apply the requirement for metadata in an ISO 19650 project. And we can use this, for example, such as suitability codes or applying revision attributes as well. And we can create and name these as required by the project. Auto versioning acts as the archive state of a particular project. Every time a file gets updated and retains the same name, it's automatically kept as a version Therefore, all of our archived information is retained automatically within the BIM 360 environment, and we can roll back to those particular archive versions or auto versions, versions at any point within a project and even concur them from V1 to V5, for example, as seen on screen here. The reviews workflow flows allows us to comply with the approvals and quality assurance checks that are required in an ISO 19650 workflow. We can create custom reviews and we can title them accordingly and have folders and files to be copied once they go through an approved process and once they move from individual to individual and are approved in the correct and agreed format. Here we have an example of an ISO 19650 workflow. So this clause just outlines what is required within the ISO 19650 document part two. In clause 5.3.4. So here we have an example of an architect initiating their model. So this is the very first time they've modeled the outline design of their project. They're going to then place it into their project folder within BIM 360. And this is only done once per model, and they're just initiating it using BIM 360 collaboration. So it's going to choose the correct folder that it goes into, then they're going to initiate. This can take a couple of minutes just for the first model to be initiated and then a few minutes later they'll be able to view their particular folder or their particular file within the folder structure and in this case we're using the description tag to apply our revision metadata and we're going to submit it for a review to be reviewed internally by our BIM manager and then to be copied to the shared area for the structural engineer to then retrieve it. So we're going to submit for review using a pre set up approval workflow as created in BIM 360. 
Architect Whip to BIM Manager to Architect Shared. Once it's moved into the shared folder, the structural engineer can then access that and any other design consultants that receive notifications for that particular folder. So we're going to submit this to our internal BIM manager in our architectural office. So we can select who gets notified for this particular review. But the reviewers are already built into this approval workflow that has been set up in the background. So the BIM manager receives a notification. They can then review that particular item that's been sent to them. So all their, the BIM manager here is checking that the container, i.e. the file name is named correctly, the revision code is correctly as in accordance with the master information delivery plan. The BIM manager is then going to start that particular review of that file. So in this case, we're going to use the approval status for the suitability code. So we're going to set it to S1 for suitable for coordination. So the BIM manager is then going to submit that as approved. And we can add some notation or comments to this particular response if we want. So that review is now closed. And that file has been copied to the architect shared area. Using sets, we can then create the classification codes using UniClass format. And the BIM manager assigns this. Now the structural engineer has received an email to say that a, a file has been updated to the shared area. And the structural engineer can now review this particular model, linking it into their own Revit model or whatever method that they're going to model their own structural elements around this particular architectural model. So to look at a second workflow, in step one, if we have se several WIP iterations of a Revit model by the author, which are saved to the common data environment, or BIM 360, and then we assign these a metadata status of S0, the Revit model undergoes a quality assurance check within that particular task team to review the container, not its contents, just the file naming, against the project information standard. And this refers back to the ISO clause 5.6.3. Then the step two, the contents of the geometrical or the Revit model go through a final review within the task team, so within the architectural team. The geometrical model or the Revit model in its native or in an open format is assigned an S1 status, suitable for coordination only and release for sharing. The task team has decided not to export documents or drawings from the Revit model until the coordination review is complete. Then at step four, the Revit model is shared via the common data environment or by PIM360, and this is managed by the lead appointed party in this case. So the delivery team review the model alongside other information containers to facilitate continuous coordination of the information across each element of the information model. So following the review, the authoring task team updates that model in the work in progress state and based on feedback from the delivery team following their coordination review, the model is also refined and developed to allow a general arrangement sheet to be exported. The drawing is assigned a status S0 and saved to BIM 360 with a metadata revision P01.01 until it's ready to pass its quality assurance check within the task team. The contents of the drawing go through a final completeness and coherency review by the manager of the task team. The drawing is assigned status S3, suitable for review and comment, as this drawing is not being issued for coordinating purpose, but only for comment. The drawing is shared directly with the lead appointed party.
that drawing along with any other supporting information is then reviewed by the lead appointed party to ensure that it complies with the project performance and the lead appointed party comments and instructs the task team to update and reissue for authorization. All of this can be captured within BIM 360 using the issues and the markup tools and assigning it to the relevant or responsible role or person. Looking at some BIM 360 design workflows, our BIM 360 design or design collaboration module effectively acts as our work in progress folder within our ISO compliant workflows. The previous workflows we looked at only use BIM 360 document management, but with the add-on of design collaboration, you can further enhance that. With this swim lane view that we can see at the top of the screen, each of these represents a different iteration of the model and a different sharing of the model. And this is all captured and recorded per team within our swim lane view in design collaboration. Within BIM 360 Coordinate, we can also link the architectural and structural models, for example, or other consultant models. We can capture all of those clashes and automatically clash them from our project files folder to our plans folder within BIM 360. So any issues are captured in BIM 360 and this is part of the coordination process as required within ISO 19650. In this particular example, we can see that the architect needs to remove their floor models within their architectural model as the structural engineer has modeled the concrete floor required for this particular model. An issue is then created and a comment for the architect to remove the floor is saved. The architect is then tagged in this particular element and they will receive a notification once we hit save. Thank you for your time. So we reviewed a number of compliant workflows with BIM 360 docs and mentioning that BIM 360 design can behave as your work in progress area. And then BIM 360 coordinate, we can always move fo files between our plans and folders and project files section using a workflow via Revit.